Good afternoon, everyone. What a gorgeous day. Good thing to be fighting for equal rights in the sun and not in the rain. I, I don't think that there's a question anymore about um, whether there's consensus opinion on whether or not we deserve equal rights as far as marriage is concerned. Gays, straights, lefties, righties right across the globe are recognising that love is love and that all people should have the right to choose to marry. And governments across the globe are falling into line. It's not a question of if anymore, it's a question of when. It's always a great honour to be given an opportunity to speak in a public forum and generally when I get an invitation like this, I try my very best to give voice to the people and the perspectives that may be overlooked. In this instance, a great example of this is the injustice that is experienced by intersex people. A decision to have neither M nor F on their birth certificates means that an intersex person can't marry at all. That delegitimisation was so core that I was afraid to tell people what had happened. And that internalised shame is the key reason that I've chosen to share my story with you today. The legal status of our marriage was revoked because of a ridiculous inconsistency between state and federal legislation that denies me a right that's being afforded to other trans men. But the point is that it feeds into a legal framework that is designed to prevent same-sex marriage. So I have chosen this day to stand up and say that I will not feed into a system of inequality by hiding my story as though it's something to be ashamed of, as though our love of each other is the problem, as though your love for each other is the problem. <laughs> it's taken me quite a bit of work to get back to a place of empowerment around my marriage. She is my wife and I am her husband. The fundamental value of it got located exactly where it should be, from within the love that inspired that enormous commitment from within my heart and from within my love for this woman. And there is a peace that we won't be able to restore until this legislation is changed so that gender is no longer a consideration, period. What I want to leave you with is this affirmation. Marriage is such a beautiful experience. It should be the right of any person that chooses to embrace it, regardless of your sexuality, regardless of your gender. We will have our day. This thing ain't over, not by a long shot. Uh, we're really delighted to come out and speak in support of equal marriage rights. People may question why it's relevant for the nurses, and in fact, people have said to me, why are the nurses getting involved in this issue? But this issue is very much in the domain of the nurses' union. We are a union, and it's about equality, and it's also about advocating for health for a minority group. Equality is a principle that we understand as nurses and midwives. We advocate for equity of access to public health. When patients are admitted into our care in hospitals, in aged care facilities, in the community, it doesn't matter what your socioeconomic background is, what your gender is, what your religion is, it don't, or anything about your cultural experience, it's all about the right for all, and that should be expressed in legislation. tells us that members of the gay community are at greater risk of depression and have the highest rates of suicide. It is unacceptable that we have the knowledge that gay and lesbian young people are six times more likely and more at risk to self-harm than their heterosexual peers. And yet we're not properly addressing the critical health issue in a way that could have a significant impact on improving health outcomes. Removing the discriminatory, re discriminatory references from the Marriage Act so that it doesn't matter what your sex is, your sexuality or gender, you have the opportunity to marry the person you love and have that union recognised in law is an essential step for a society committed to actively promote the best health, health outcomes for all. And on a personal note, 
I'd just like to say how proud, proud I am to be part of a union, to be part of an organisation that publicly defends people's rights. As a nurse and a, and a parent, it is important for me to stand up for our children's rights. I don't want to be part of a community that institutionalises discrimination. This is for the future, for our children, and we need to have the fight today as there is no place for discrimination simply because of who you love in this society. Thanks very much. I also wanted to acknowledge the Indigenous owners of the land and their elders past and present. I also wanted to acknowledge my elders in the LGBTI community who I take my invisible hat off to. The people who have come before us and fought for our rights as they are today. I want to say thank you to those people. So Safe Schools Coalition, yeah, we were set up at the end of 2010 to fight back against homophobia and transphobia and discrimination in schools to support sexual diversity and gender diversity and we've been doing that ever since and we now are pleased to announce that we have over a hundred schools that have joined Safe Schools Coalition, 103 schools including Catholic schools, including primary schools, including Jewish schools, schools that have made a commitment and said in public to their communities that we are schools that support sexual diversity. Not that we are schools that just get rid of bullying. We do more than that. We support the sexual diversity of our students and the gender diversity of our students, our teachers, our family members, our parents, our brothers and sisters and cousins and friends and everyone in that whole school community. And I think and I hope that that's making a difference. We have people telling us and spreading lies, basically. People like the Australian Christian Lobby who tell us that it's somehow a health hazard to be gay, to be lesbian, to be bisexual, to be transgender, that that is bad for your health. That's what they want people to believe. And that is not the truth. That is not the truth. The truth is that homophobia and transphobia and gender-based discrimination and gender binaries are the things that are bad for our health. And we also know the tide is turning, not because somehow it was inevitably going to turn, but it's turning because we are the ones fighting for that change. And we know and we can see all of the young people and all of those people who put up their hands and said, I'm here from a high school. These are the people who are fighting that discrimination, who are taking to the streets like we are today. The question of equal marriage is important in every single school I go to because I talk to teachers and they say to me, how can we continue to fight against homophobia when the students will say to us, yeah, but same-sex couples or transgender people can't get married to the people they love it, they love. The law says so. The law says it's not equal. And then we have to turn around as teachers and say, well, it should be, but it's not. We have to work in this context where we have this state-sponsored homophobia in this discriminatory law and still fight against homophobia. It makes no sense. It's a, it's a total contradiction to say, yeah, we want Safe Schools Coalition, but you can't get married to the person that you love. That's why I'm a part of this fight, for many other reasons as well. And that is why I fundamentally support this campaign and will be a part of this campaign, fighting alongside you, alongside teachers and students and everyone else, until we win this victory. This is the biggest movement for LGBT rights that Australia has ever seen. Many of you would also know the struggles faced by youths in the LGBTIQ community. However, only a few people would know what it's like to be a youth in the LGBTIQ community that is also in a small community. I'm Steph. I'm from Townsville in Queensland, and I'm currently living in Albury, Bodonga, which is on the border of New South Wales, Victoria. And I'm a Year 12 student. So what does it mean to me to have marriage equality? I'm only 18. I'm a student, and I have no intentions to start a family for a while. However, I'm going to tell you a bit about the Equal Love campaign means to me. <laughs> and I'm going to try and explain what this campaign symbolises to many young LGBTIQ teens, people living in the physical isolation of regional and remote Australia. 
It's a well-known fact that rates of mental illness and suicide are higher among people in our community in regional states. Last year in Albury, four teenagers committed suicide in a period of four weeks, all of which were linked to bullying. So the stakes are definitely higher for us. Last year, for example, I asked my school if I could take my female best friend to the school debutante ball. My school told me I could only go if I took a guard, so I missed out on a rite of passage that I had been looking forward to for a long time. I stayed at home while all of my friends got dressed up. My friends rode in a limo, they got their photos taken, and they got presented to their community and had a wonderful night. Aubrey doesn't have an active LGBTIQ community. There aren't same-sex couples walking around holding hands. There's only been one Aubrey Wodonga Equal Love Rally. There's no headspace, no same-sex attraction friendly youth groups, and no safe places available to LGBTIQ people, such as the ones that are available in Melbourne, as well as their youth groups and their safe places. When I watch TV, I hardly ever see any LGBTIQ characters or any relationships that resemble mine. TV shows are moved from main TV channels to the less popular and less conservative channels. When I'm bullied at school for being in a gay relationship or for being a bisexual, the teachers in the past have turned a blind eye and in some cases, like banning me from the dead ball, have actively discriminated against me. When I hear the Prime Minister and other leaders of our country say I don't deserve equality, that I'm not allowed to marry the woman I love, it just drives the message home loud and clear. I'm not supposed to be seen, I'm not supposed to be heard, I don't deserve to be protected from harassment and bullying, and my love and my relationship doesn't count for much at all, and that hurts. Six months ago I was shy. I wasn't open about my life at all, and I was too scared to come out. I had no confidence, and I barely spoke to other people. Then three things happened to me in this order. I went to the Aubrey Wodonga Equal Love Rally. I fell in love with my girlfriend, and I went to the minus 18 same-sex formula in Melbourne, along with almost 600 other same-sex attracted young people. The rally in Aubrey taught me that I am part of a community, and I can be active in that. It showed me that it's important to try and inspire change and encourage me to fight for the things that I want. Falling in love with my girlfriend taught me that I can be anyone or do anything that I set my mind to. Yeah. Taught me that someone can fall in love with me despite my past, despite my flaws. In the wise song lyrics of Macklemore, in the song most of you will know, Same Love, a certificate on paper isn't going to change at all, but it's a damn good place to start. community and in the LGBTIQ community, I believe that everyone deserves to feel safe and supported and have equal rights, as stated in Article 16 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that we are entitled to. As a bisexual, I can marry the man of my dreams. So how is it fair that I can't marry the woman of my dreams? 64% of Australians support it, so why doesn't our government? <laughs> say to my previous speaker, Stephanie from Albury for PM. That was just fantastic. It is fantastic. I'm told that in Melbourne there have been more than 14 equal love rallies and to find here more than 2,000 people turning out again, bigger than last time, bigger than the time before that, shows that it is now a matter of when, not if. I know that many of you here are doing this for yourselves and for your rights and saying that you deserve the same right as everyone else who works in the same workplace as you or who you catch the tram with. You have the same right to frock up just like anyone else does. I saw the banner before that said, I'm doing this because I look good in tulle. Well, good on you. And I know that many of you are here because you're doing it for the people close to you, because you have sons and daughters or cousins or friends, and you want to be able to see them share their love publicly with the person that they love and celebrate it just like anyone else can.
and I know that you're sick of seeing this discrimination continue. But perhaps most importantly, you are all doing this for many, many people that you have never met because as you've been reminded today, every day of the year, there is a girl in a country town who is working out who she's attracted to and she needs to know that the community and her national parliament believes that all love is equal. And every day of the year, there is a boy at school who wants to take another boy from his class to the formal and he needs to know that he is not treated like a second class citizen in this country. And what every one of you are doing by turning up here today and getting behind the push for equal marriage is sending a message out to everyone who is listening that all love is equal and that as far as the law is concerned, well, equality is not equality unless everyone gets it. Last year we introduced a bill into Parliament to remove discrimination from our Marriage Act once and for all. Now that bill has been debated and debated and debated and it's been to an inquiry where more people responded to that inquiry than any other inquiry in parliamentary history and when over a quarter of a million people from across Australia responded, 64% of them said, pass this law. But we knew, we have seen our cousins across the ditch come out and sing in Parliament and say it is time that we embrace all forms of love. We have seen France join the ranks of those who allow equal love. And we have seen a Conservative Prime Minister in the United Kingdom, David Cameron, come out and say, I have the courage to know that when we let more people get married, it strengthens the institutions of love. And I'll tell you what, at a time when there is so much hate and violence in the world, we need more love, not less. And so that brings us to Tony Abbott. Tony Abbott has said he will not allow religion to influence his approach to politics. Well, if that's true, prove it by allowing a conscience vote for your side of Parliament for equal marriage. And he has said, well, we didn't go to the last election with any policy on it, so we can't change our mind. Rubbish. You went to the last election saying that all Liberal MPs had the right to vote according to their conscience. Well, let them do it. If you seriously believe that the government has no role stepping inside people's lives and into their bedrooms and into their personal relationships telling them what they can and can't do, and if you seriously believe that an individual has freedom of choice, then you must allow coalition MPs to vote for equal marriage. It is my fervent, fervent hope that come the election this will not be an election issue because we will have changed this law and you will be here celebrating, frocked up in chul, having one big mass wedding celebration as we say to the rest of the country, finally, parliamentarians have caught up and finally, all love is equal. Good on you. The fight is not over. We have not voted yet. So do not allow anyone to tell you that Tony Abbott is going to get in. Because I can tell you right now, he hasn't got my vote. And I can tell you this, Tony Abbott made it very clear this week. He will not allow a conscience vote in his full term of Parliament. So if Tony Abbott does get in, we have no chance of a conscience vote on the Conservative side. And not only that, to throw more salt in the wound, he also said, and I won't even be talking about this civil union idea. Tony Abbott, fuck you. Yeah.